wants to be a superhero or a villain, right? Yes. Um, my childhood reads like a superhero story of a really white trash superhero. Like, uh, and the only reason that I haven't broken into this, for the record, is the costume. Because your costume always has to reflect your past. And I don't want to fight crime wearing a leather jacket with a picture of a wolf bang at the moon that's actually a dream catcher. <laughs> interesting parenting style. For instance, to potty train me instead of going traditional routes with like, you know, treats and toys and a book, uh, they instead bought five potty chairs and put one in every single room of the house. So that no matter what was going on, dinner, watching a movie, or sitting around chatting with friends, chances are I was off to the corner pooping. <laughs> I can shit anywhere. So our house was not only a home, it was also a place of business. <laughs> and I don't think that's appropriate workplace conduct. <laughs> and you know who really suffers? The customer. <laughs> yeah. Because don't get me wrong, it is fucked up that drug dealers are raising children. I gotcha. I agree. I was there. <laughs> but imagine being the guy buying weed with a toddler shitting in the corner. <laughs> defecating children. <laughs> That'll fuck a person up. <laughs> Kids, on the other hand, have no clue what's going on. Let's say, hypothetically, when you were three, you were on the run from the feds for a year. Hypothetically. <laughs> no, fuck hypothetically. That shit happened. I was on the run from the cops before I could run. <laughs> You're not thinking to yourself as that child, wow, these people probably shouldn't have had children. <laughs> You're probably Make sure it's fun! <laughs> but it's not, it's not all bad. There is a certain comfort to not having to worry about ruining the family name. There's nothing I can do to tarnish that motherfucker. <laughs> and they're surprisingly accepting of lots of stuff. Um, when I was 18, my dad came out for me to the entire family, and I wasn't there for it. <laughs> but I imagine. It was just, uh, listen here, Susie's gay, she's in love with her best friend Rachel, this is how it's gonna be, you got a problem with her, we got a problem with you. that he didn't let the fact that I am not gay <laughs> or in love with my best friend Rachel <laughs> supporting me and demanding that my family accept me. <laughs> and he wasn't looking for a thank you or praise because in fact he didn't tell me he did this. <laughs> I had to find out a year later when my aunt asked me if things had gotten hard for me and Rachel with the long distance from us being in college. parents. <laughs> now they're starting to bug me for grandchildren, which, no. I've seen what happens with my genetics. <laughs> We're stopping that shit right now. But I have uh, started doing some internet dating because I've given up on meeting normal people in normal ways. Um, and it's kind of fun, it's exciting. Um, the prospect of not dying alone. Uh, it's exciting right up until you realize that if you had been born before internet dating, you would have fucking died alone. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm living alone now, which is super fun. Um, there's a lot of interesting, weird, and kind of good things. Like, don't get me wrong, the wholesale freedom on masturbation is tops. <laughs> However, when you take away the exasperated groans and judging eyes of roommates, uh, you will live in filth. And also, a lot of uh, food products don't come in like single household portions. So unless you eat a turkey sandwich for lunch every fucking day, that's gonna go bad. So I get to have the saddest dinner party you can imagine every month. 
Welcome to the perishable extravaganza. <laughs> to start, four string cheeses. For the entree, a pack of ground beef and half a pack of bacon. And to finish for dessert, we'll all split the last yogurt. Thank you, I'm doing good night.